Okay, we've come from the virtual environment which is called the cave, which is used to design the, the, the apartments. We've now come to the actual apartments themselves, which are the highly sensed environments that contain the sensors. And that's what we're going to look at. We're inside now in the apartments here in Great Northern Haven and um, we've got 16 apartments here where older people have been living for the past four years and as you'll see throughout the apartment we've got um, a number of different sensors in here so the, the main ones that you can see are these um, passive infrared sensors up here and we have um, contact sensors on, on the windows and doors. And basically this um, screen here just gives us a view of, you know, a schematic of, of the apartment and the current status of the apartment. So we can see at the minute in the living room, this presence, this movement in here, and the, the box here is colored green. And um, we can see that the living room lights are on. If I open a window here, and um, you'll see that the status down here has changed to, to open. So basically, if an alert is triggered in the apartment, if someone presses a, you know, one of the emergency buttons or if we detect through the sensors that a person maybe has had a fall, um, the, the apartments are all connected up to a 24 monitoring service, 24 hour monitoring service. And they can see the screen and they can see, for example, where there was last movement in the home. Is the home secure? Is the front door open? Is there a window open? Might there have been an intruder? Um, and it just gives an idea of, of the security of the home. Um, we also use the, the PIR sensors to look at more long-term um, patterns of behaviour over time and how they change for a person. Um, so for example, is the person getting out less? Are they spending more time in bed? And we're not only monitoring this information and collecting it, but we're also feeding it back to the residents themselves so that they can play a part in self-managing their health and their wellness. And you know, it gives them more empowerment over sort of taking care of, of their own health and well-being. We also use the cave then to visualize a lot of the data that's coming in from Great Northern Haven. This visualization here looks at movement and movement changes over kind of extended periods of time. So this is what we call a clock plot here. Um, it's a number of concentric circles and day one is in the very centre and each subsequent day is, is, is a day out from that. So this begins to look at uh, what are the movement patterns across a number of days. So you can see that the night time periods will be, between, will be between maybe 12 o'clock at night and maybe kind of 10 in the morning. And you see that during that period that there's very kind of low activity within the house. So we can start to make, make suggestions of well, perhaps it's when there's low activity or when the person is asleep. And can we start to kind of look at over extended periods of time and say, well, how is that sleep changing over time? Are they getting up out of bed? Is there movement in the house at night time? Um, and when does that change? So, uh, perhaps maybe the person is, is less active within the environment or maybe they're staying in bed a little bit later. Um, and then how do we start to push the information back to the person? How do we kind of allow the person to kind of get involved um, and to say, well, actually, this is an unhealthy behavior. This is not a best practice behavior. And how can we change that? So uh, the person kind of begins to self-manage their own health. And we also then work with a number of different clinicians around these type of visualizations. So how can we begin to like feed this type of information, which might be very technical in nature, back to the person themselves, back to clinicians um, throughout the daytime. This is a, a, a research collaboration that brings together Fujitsu Ireland, which is a business unit, and Fujitsu Laboratories in Japan. It's that combination that hopefully will enable us to look at the technology and deliver new business models. It's key to have that research input from Japan because it gives us a different cultural aspect to the design of that technology. They believe that if we can do that, if we can deliver technology that people can use in their day-to-day -day living existence, then we've embraced sensor technology and delivered real benefit for people.